Stargazers getting a once in a lifetime opportunity this week to watch a green comet shoot past Earth. Experts say it first flew past our planet 50,000 years ago. No one remembers it. The comet will shoot past the Earth at a distance of 42 million kilometers. It'll be most visible tonight, but you may be able to catch a glimpse of it every day this week. That is, if the sky is clear. We'll talk about the skies with Bill. But in the meantime, York University astronomy professor Paul Delaney joins us live from Tucson, Arizona. Professor Delaney, good for you to join us this morning from Arizona. I know you're a couple hours behind us, but how big of a deal is this green comet of a celestial event? Well, the green is certainly getting a great deal of airplay. As you can see, I'm trying to give that color here. However, when you look at it with the binoculars, which is the best way for most people to be able to see it, you're not going to see the green. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use a very technical term. It's, it's a fuzzball. It, it's a grayish fuzzball in the sky. And unfortunately, in light polluted skies like any of our big cities, you're going to be very hard pressed to see much more than that fuzzball. Any, any time a comet comes through, though, I really urge people to go out and have a look at it because it's a piece of our past, a, a very distant piece of our past, four and a half billion years in the making. This comet is wandering through the inner solar system, as you said, for the first time in like 50,000 years. You can see celestial motion in action as it moves with respect to the background stars. It will change its appearance subtly from night to night. And as I said, if you've got a good pair of binoculars, you'll be able to see those changes and see that motion. Uh, it's so cool. I, I love that. I remember watching Halley's Comet as a kid as it passed by, you know, so many years ago. That was so fascinating. Can we actually learn something from this still? Like, is there anything that, that this comet, this green comet is telling us or providing to us in terms of learning whether about space or the atmosphere, etc.? Every comet and every meteorite that you might pick up, anything that comes by the Earth is a time capsule. So there is information embedded inside this particular comet that we were unaware of. It's a piece of our past. As I said, what the solar system was made from is embedded inside this comet, and every comet has a slightly different story to tell. So yes, there is lots of information. Yeah, with binoculars, you're not going to see it, but obviously when we start analyzing Analyzing the contents of this uh, comet with our spectrographs, with our telescopes, we are putting another piece of our formation into perspective. So, yeah, we're very excited every time we see these comets come through our skies. Okay, and Professor, you've mentioned, you know, using binoculars, I'm sure telescopes would help as well. Could you see this if you just sort of glance up to the sky on a clear night over the next couple of nights, or do you really need some sort of enhancement in order to enable you to catch at least something? strongly recommend binoculars. If you're in a dark site, so if you're away from the city limits, it is naked eye visible. You'll have to know where to look. It's in the northern sky above Polaris. That's the North Star. So Canada is very, very well placed. As I said, it's about 20 degrees, 25 degrees above the North Star. If you're in a dark site, you will see this little fuzzy speck in the sky. And from night to night, you will see that fuzzball move. But if you're in the city, you absolutely need binoculars to be able to pull it out of the background uh, you know, murk of our light polluted skies, unfortunately. Right, but yeah, binoculars the light... is all you need. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. I mean, most people have a pair of binoculars sort of kicking around their house somewhere. Is there a good right. time or a better time that you're more likely to catch a glimpse of it and you don't want to stand there getting a sore neck for several hours? Fortunately, it's at uh, the moment twilight ends, so after the sun goes down and twilight ends tonight or any night this week, that will be just fine. It's up almost all night. It's just about what we call circumpolar here in uh, in most parts of Canada. But as the days progress, it is going to get higher and higher and it will begin to set uh, you know, just prior to sunrise. So if you can do it tonight or tomorrow night, Friday night, the sooner you can see it, the brighter it will be. It is as close to the Earth today as it is ever going to be, which means, of course, that it will be as brightest, at, it will be at its brightest tonight. So tonight, Thursday night, Friday night, those are your best nights. But with binoculars, again, you'll be able to see it deep mm -hmm. into next week as it by, passes by Capella. And then on February 10th, it's going to be right beside Mars. So wow. it's actually putting on a bit of a grand tour across the sky. No kidding. Well, this uh, once in 50,000 a year trip, they may as well make it worthwhile, I suppose. Uh, York <laughs> University astronomy <laughs> professor Paul Delaney. Listen, we always appreciate the time. Thanks for helping us understand a little more about what's going on in the uh, skies above us. Enjoy your time in Arizona. We'll talk soon, I'm sure. Thanks very much, Nick. Have a good one. Clear skies.